everybody. So I hope you really enjoy this recap of The Way Home uh, episodes, season two, episodes eight and nine. Um, so I had a really hard time finding anybody to join me for this recap. Uh, and Camille, our friend from Hawaii, was kind enough to agree. Um, but some of her audio was not perfect. And I apologize for that. I hope you still enjoy it. It was the best that we could do for this this moment. Uh, and uh, so I hope you enjoy the discussion, uh, even though there's some pinging and some some flawed audio. But there we go. That's what's going on. And uh, I really appreciate Camille for taking time to talk the way home with us. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Home Monkeys podcast. And we are here to talk about the way home. We're talking, it's the penultimate episodes, episodes eight and nine of season two. And uh, it's getting pretty exciting. And I'm film critic Rachel Wagner and Camilla's here. Hi. Hey, how are you doing? I'm back. Yes. <laughs> uh, how are things going over there in Hawaii? Um, they're good. We're like, um, it's kind of cloudy today here right now. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Kind of rain. Everything's pretty good. No, no rain. Just clouds. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Right now, um, my hometown is where my heart is at. I'm from Baltimore, and you heard uh, about the bridge collapse, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm. I grew up in Maryland as well, so it's definitely very chilling. Yeah. yeah. Praying for everyone in Baltimore right now. Yeah, definitely for sure. Uh, well, I don't think we've had you on a recap for the way home. Nope. Uh, but so, I'm a huge fan. Huge, huge fan. I'm yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So. Y- I guess first, what do you think of the show? And second of all, how do you feel about this second season? We're nearing the end. Oh my god, I love the show. I'm a huge Kylie fan, like huge Kylie fan. Mm-hmm. Loved her since Grey's Anatomy, um, and like I at first was like a, a little apprehensive because you know I'm, I'm not an I, I I don't like niche. I, it takes me a minute to like get to like new shows. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a couple of episodes kind of thing. But like, I remember watching the pilot and going, whoa, like they caught me with the lady running in the, mm-hmm. you know, woods. The white witch. Like with the first scene. You know, we didn't know at the time when they showed the pilot the history of it or what was going on or whatever. So, so I'm thinking like, Salem Witch Project, what's going on? You know, even though it wasn't Salem Witch because it was like 200 years later. But yeah, no, I was just like enamored from like the very beginning and stuff. Um, and then like, you know, the ending with Jacob, we find out that Jacob was in 1814 and Colton, you know, dying and stuff. Mm-hmm. That was heart-wrenching and stuff like that. And, um, I, this whole season, it's been like a lot of. I love the eighteen hundred storyline. Like that, yeah. that to me is like my favorite storyline. Yeah, it's. It, I love. Um, I, I'm starting to fall fall for Thomas and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like, I love him. And I'm gonna cry if we find if we find out that he's you know. The ghost in, um, sorry, um, you know, uh, spoiler alert if nobody has, if people are listening to this and hasn't watched season, um, episode nine, but well, yeah, it's a recap episode, that, so um, you don't have yeah. to worry about it. Okay. Well, yeah. yeah if, like we find out in episode 10 that Thomas is going to be the ghost, if it's confirmed anyway, yeah, that he's the ghost of, um, the lighthouse and stuff like that. You know, it's just, it's just, um, is it like I think the reason why I didn't like episode eight as much as I liked all the other episodes is because there wasn't a lot of um 1800s you know mm-hmm. yeah well the thing is is that my problem I think the season has been a, a bit of a mixed bag and, yeah. and that's partly because I think season one was so good and oh, yeah, uh, and definitely. so it's kind of set up this expectation that's hard to and there's so many moving pieces all happening yeah, yeah. but i think what's I, happening is that especially in present day we keep having the same conversations over and over and over it's a repeat. again 
it's es- a repeat especially with adult elliot we just keep talking and having the same conversation about it's oh, the time same- travel, ruining my life and you know and it's just kind of like it's making i i feel like most of the 2024 characters are feeling unlikable yeah and and so it's and and like Dell, they've done like nothing with her. She has just been like yeah. a complete waste this season. Stagnant. And, yeah. Yeah. And uh and so it really kind of leaves you longing for the 1814 sections because you actually have more people that at least I care about with Jacob being yep. there. What's going on with that? With Susanna, with, with Thomas, Thomas, with, you know, yep. and, and there's more with for Cyrus, Kat to do. With everything. Yeah. Yeah. And we're not just having the same conversations over and over again. And so I, I, that- I agree with you completely that 1814 has more going on. It's more interesting. Yep. I think that, I think that, like you said, where um, they're recycling the whole storyline with Elliot again where it's like oh my god time travel has ruined me but yeah he keeps like inserting himself into it anyway yeah it's sort of why a lot of people have myself included have started to like falling away from the cat and Elliot woohoo let yeah. them get together thing because it's like it, it, you start to realize that it's become toxic for both of them because they're like they, it's just a constant loop you know it's like, yeah. what do y'all got to break it off? You know, yeah. just go move on. You know, I, and I, I don't think it's fair for Elliot to have blamed Alice or to bl- for him to blame Kat or anybody else for his life choices or whatever. So he, mm-hmm. I remember like last, was it last season? Where he was saying he felt proud. He knew what his future was going to be. He didn't, you know, all the sad from the moment that Kat, um, Alice time traveled and i'm yeah. like you should no you shouldn't have felt trapped you still had choices you know yeah. what i mean and we learn a lot in these two episodes really about how many choices he did have and yeah. and, and you know i was community we'll talk about it but uh but yeah he um he could have chosen like a completely different life you know yeah. like and he could have found someone else to marry and fall in love with he could he, have he did he is but he is divorced so he did find somebody yeah oh he is i forgot that yeah yeah he was divorced they he mentioned is? it i they forgot that season one. Oh, he did i forgot that but um but anyway let's talk about episode eight you said that you weren't as big a fan of it but let's nope. start break it down so this is called lose yourself yep. and it's del cat and alice learn how events of the past have shaped their family's present Alice learns a secret that affects her relationship with Elliot. So yep. what was it about, particularly about this episode that you think didn't really work that well? I feel, and I said this on my review, I, they Hallmark built up Linda Moore to be this like explosive, life altering, um, you know, thing that like you know changes everybody's lives. Alice is gonna hate Cat and Elliot. Uh, Dell is not gonna talk to her for seventeen years. Now, mind you, I understand now when we've seen episode nine, yeah, like why some of that stuff happened. But like when, when it's all when all we say is when Lingo more party is built up to be this big thing, and all we see is that is that it's like really that was just nothing you know (laughs) yeah i do i do think it was a little uh underwhelming like this big party you know that they keep talking about and you think that that uh that there's going to be like some serious betrayal and basically what you get at this party is that like cat has a moment where she says oh i want to run away with you basically with elliot and then she finds out that she's pregnant and she changes her whole plan because she'd gotten into school in London. And so she's like, well, run away with me to London. And, and, you know, he says, he says, why did you ask me to go to London? Will I ever be your first choice or your fallback? And again, I think that that would be more effective if we hadn't already had this basic conversation like 15 times. Amen. with you know whether it's london or a million other things we keep having this conversation between cat and elliot 
And yep. it's just, it's making both of them feel kind of unlikable. And we just don't care as much about the relationship as we should now because mm-hmm. the, and, and she says, how am I supposed to choose you when I don't know how you feel? And so I, I mean, guess he's been pretty enough, obvious about feel, it for me. <laughs> it seems like he's been pretty clear uh, how he's felt. I mean, it doesn't take a genius to kind of figure that out, but I, I don't know. And, and then he says, we keep missing our moment, you know, which is interesting for a show about time travel that they keep missing their moments. Right. It's like, time. Well, I mean, my thinking about it is, um, it's just at this point, I think Kat and Elliot are just destined to be friends. Um, even he says that he says, maybe we're better off as friends. Yeah. And, Stop trying to push to be something more. Just like, because mm-hmm. I mean, like, A, it's a girl and boy. I mean, people of the opposite sex can just be friends. And yeah. I think that, that that's what they're good at. I mean, they've been friends all this time. Why try to change it? You know what I mean? But I don't think that Hallmark will do that. I think that I, I would be shocked if we end this series, you know, however many seasons. And we end up not with Kat and Elliot together. Like, I just, I, I, I don't think that they would have the sort of the guts. But at this point, it's just like, I'm just tired of this cycle. And, yeah, no, I completely agree. And <laughs> especially when you have Thomas there, who's like carrying her into the ocean, like, like helping her like he's just such a maybe he could, maybe he could tra- time travel to 2024. Yeah, well, we know because the very first time we saw him, he was in the pond yep. bathing, he, right? Yep. So I we mean, know that hot. Thomas, at least to this point, can't time travel. Ho, ho, ho. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcasts, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash hallmarkies. Maybe he needs to like go all the way in. He can't just like be halfway. (laughs) Maybe, maybe his head has to be submerged. I don't know. But, um, but yeah, it, it, it it hurts Elliot even more because we have this really great guy in 1814 to compare him to, who's not whining and complaining and having the same conversation over and over again. No. And Mm. he's, I like Ali Thomas talking about like your heart will be with me. You so say your heart will be. Oh my like, god, damn it! I hate you. Why are you like? <laughs> well, yeah. So then Jacob he says, "I remember falling in like I was drowning, and then yeah. I couldn't find my way home." And okay. she says, "Why didn't you come?" Or he says, "Why didn't you come for me sooner?" Oh no! And you know, it's kind of like poor Jacob. Like he. <laughs> I mean, how I- is? How is she supposed to know that it's a time traveling pond? It's not the the first thing that you think of. Although, like, if other Landry members know about the pond, which we don't know at this point, if they do, then why didn't anybody else try? Well, maybe they did. And maybe they did, but it didn't take them there. I don't know. Like, And and if that, because the pond takes you where you need to go. And so if that's the case, why didn't the pond take anybody to help Jacob, like, why did Jacob need to be there? Was it because of Susanna or to start the Landry line? I guess I don't know. I don't know. It's very interesting. 
And uh, and so Thomas says to Kat. Well, says, here's the other thing that I want to know. It's like, okay, so she traveled back as a boy. So he's going to be an adult in 1814. We assume that the Landry line that we know of, anyway, with um, Alice, Colton, you know, Kat, et cetera. Yeah. Started from his brother. And Elijah, their yeah. subject. No, no, no. Yeah, Elijah and his biological son. Mm-hmm. Right. What William was his name? And their son Jacob. Right? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So but my question is, does Jacob have his own kids in eighteen hundreds? Not right now. No, not right, right now, but would he would he have or does time travel sort of like I don't know, does time travel sort of like affect I don't know yeah, if the they're gonna to outlander in it. I don't know <laughs> what they're gonna do. <laughs> it's but, um, weird. It, I mean, because so Thomas says we'll keep him safe until you return to us. Yeah, and uh, and uh, Jacob, he kind of like went into a certain degree of amnesia, sort of, and he just kind of forgot everything until he saw a cat. That's why he didn't try to get home again in, in the um. Uh, well, yeah, and, I, I would as, I would assume that he had like some sort of trauma. Yeah, so he forgot so, it. So, like, I know trauma leads to amnesia. Yeah, as someone who has PTSD, um, yeah. and so like, but that's why he didn't try to come back. And then he had to kind of like, um, blend into this new life, I guess. You yeah. know. But, so yeah, yeah. A lot of, a lot. A lot of so, people were saying, "Sorry, I keep cutting you off." You're fine. Um, I was I was gonna say that a lot of people who were online were hoping for um Jacob to come back to present time to stay hot, you know, to return with Cat or whatever. I had a feeling from the beginning that was not going to happen, just because he has a family, his life, his livelihood, whatever, is in eighteen hundreds. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. 2024 is uh is a lot different. But if he does come back, if he does come yeah. back eventually, that would explain why he's not in any of the record books. True. So that could happen coming forward. We don't know. But um, right. we Season also three, have. He could be in a. He could he could jump into the lake and go to a whole other timeline that we don't know of. Yeah. Yet. Mm-hmm. So then uh, we have Nick coming back. Um, and Nick tells Elliot, you need to knock down this wall because he thinks that the hole in the wall was from Victor, Elliot's nope. dad. Yep. And uh, and so his dad was a very angry person. Sounds like. Yep. Yeah. Drunk. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, and so Elliot has made this whole like notebook chronicling all of Alice's time Ooh, travel. Time travel. Yep. Yeah. And uh, and so Nick finds it. Yeah. So this is a big moment. This is the moment that like I personally have been waiting for. I I felt I I felt like for Nick and Alice to move on, but like Alice to find somebody who's age appropriate for her, for Nick to like marry somebody, they needed to like meet and find closure. You know what I mean? I think that whole scene was greatly done. I love that um what's your call? Elliot was like at the stairs watching the whole time. I love that they acknowledged, you know, the awkwardness of the situation. Mm-hmm. And like you know, Nick was like, Oh my God, you're a kid. Get me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, they have this whole conversation and yeah. uh and then um, they also see each other at when they get to live Lingenmore. They s- see each other there one last time. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and um, yeah. uh, so I wonder though. I wonder though, like, has Nick figured out that? I mean, like, uh, like, he, like he, Alice was with him when they saw her parents get engaged to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> remember first time anyway yeah he finds the nobody can a pawn be a time machine so yeah he definitely yeah. starts to figure it out 
And um, and then so Alice says that she needs to go back to this Lingonmore thing and find out what's going on. And uh, Elliot tells her, for what it's worth, I hope you can forgive me. Mm-hmm. So we find out, now we also find out that Dell has this debt to Evelyn Goodwin. Yeah. Um, and then Kat and her have this big fight about her selling the land. Yeah. <laughs> There's so much going on in these two episodes. How do you yeah. like how do you talk about two episodes in one? <laughs> yeah, there's a bit. Um, but... uh, here's my question. He, why does Dal still feel obligated to a dead woman? Evelyn died, right? But yet, why does she still feel obligated to Evelyn to sell the property? You get what I'm saying? Because she has a debt. She has a debt to Evelyn. And like Colton's- money, te- monetary wise? God damn. M- money wise? Or are we talking about like because Evelyn did not press charges? Um, I can't remember. Um, I just wrote down Dell has a debt to Evelyn Goodwin. Because I didn't see any money exchange. I saw. Because like, Colton oh, was trying to get the loan. Right from her, um, did, did he? Did she? Did he? I didn't see that part. Yeah, and uh, and so yeah, this party gets out of control, uh, and uh, Monica shared the party invite in two thousand seven, and uh, and so then we have uh, Sam and Dell are dancing, and it makes her think of Colton. And uh, so they're all sort of building, building, building to what happens in the next episode between Dell and Kat. Yeah. Um, but really, I think that Dell has been almost a complete waste this season. I agree. Yeah. I just, agree. Yeah. I mean, like, um, for me, the um, I uh, she like again, she's a widow, and she's still like feeling. She still wants to hold on to stuff or whatever. And there's no like time limit to um grief. Mm-hmm. But like, it, I would, I was, I would have loved to see her like move on. You know what I mean? I would have loved to see her sell the boat. Yeah, I'd have loved to see her like, you know, well, open her heart a little bit more. She's That's the only funny. one who doesn't know about the pond. True. It leaves her out of so much of the plot. She's just a bystander on whatever else is happening. I know, and the, I mean, there, there's that like there are these scenes where Colton like implies that she's hiding something from Alice, like tell her everything or whatever. Yeah, and we still don't know what that is. There's no hint as to what that could have been. You know what I mean? So I don't yeah. know what's going on. There's just um, Dallas, just like right now. A side character. She's not even a side character. She's like a background character. Yeah. Yeah. Today's episode of the podcast is sponsored by W Rated, the podcast where we willingly watch the world's worst rated movies. Join me, Daisy. And me, Claire, as we break down the IMDb Bottom 100, choosing a different film from the list every episode. We take a deep dive into the plot, production, release and reviews, usually with a special guest, to uncover if these films are truly as bad as everyone says they are. You can find us on Spotify, Apple, Good Pods and anywhere else you find your podcasts. So do you think that Elliot has like a little bit of a point at being mad at Kat for, you know, saying, oh, well, let's run off to London. Let's like, getting his hopes up. I think he I, I I understand why he's angry. But also I but also at the same time, like he has to understand that. She found out she's pregnant. She can't go run off to London. You get what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Yeah. I, I don't think that. um she meant to like ho- get his hopes up like she was like tricking him you know what yeah. i mean like mm-hmm. i think she really did want to go to london you know and run away from the responsibilities yeah. or whatever 
But um, then she found out she's pregnant. So like most people who find out they're pregnant, sometimes your life plans change, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, and uh, maybe he, I mean, he's right. They keep missing their moment, you know, that. Yeah. And uh, so at a certain point, you got to like just move on with your life. But they keep coming into his life. So I kind of see his point, I guess. But uh, it's just not that interesting of a conflict. No, it's not. You know? Um, All right. So let's talk about episode nine. So episode nine uh, is called Here Without You. All three Landry women feel the key absence of an ally in their lives as they struggle to make life-altering decisions and choices. So who's the ally? Well, I think it's different. Um, Go ahead. I'm sorry. And, well, I think it's different for each one of them, but um, but I yeah, that's kind of a weird description. But they all miss <laughs> their dad. I think it's the biggest one. They all miss Colton. Well, I mean, um, da- Alice never met Colton. Yeah, she did. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, you know, you know what I'm saying. um but but yeah anyway so um it starts out that we find out that actually elliot is the one that punched the hole in the wall yeah uh not his dad that he was so mad about everything that happened uh with with uh cat that he came home and punched the hole in the wall Yeah. So uh, and he yeah. kept it there as like a reminder of like what he could be, like what ha- what could happen if he loses control of his anger. I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, did that surprise you at all that it was him? Not that yeah. Elliot punched a wall. Uh huh. No. No. Yeah. I mean, they I kind of shocked. built it up that it was his dad, but. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, it's interesting that he has kept it there as this reminder all this time, and that he's like written down all this stuff about Alice's trips, what he saw. Yeah. And uh, this is when they tell Nick all about Alice. Yeah. And uh, and so you know he's like, you liked knowing everything that was going on. I think you liked feeling superior. It reminds me of Victor. Oof. So that was a pretty telling moment. That 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 right there would have been like a um like a like a low blow, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I remember. I remember he said that. I was like, "Oh, that <laughs> that hurt." Yeah, that hurt me. I'm a viewer. So then we have a scene where Colton is talking about the land, and he says yeah. the pond is off limits even to us farmers. So that's interesting that he oh, yeah. seems to know that the pond is special. It makes me wonder why. Well, like, I mean, I've thought for a long time that Colton is a time traveler because yeah. he recognized Cat, adult Cat, in like, an accident. He says, oh, my cat. How would he know what but she But that's looks after like? she called him dad. He was yelling, dad, 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 when the car was hit. And then, like, she looked at him. But still, how would he know that it was, that was his daughter that looks totally different, like, than his daughter? Like, he would. There was also a look of recognition, too, when she, when he saw her for the first time going into the um, therapy session. But Mm -hmm. but, that's my opinion. But. Yeah, I think think that Colton is is time travel. I think we're going to find out more. I think the Landrys are definitely the time travelers. It's in their yeah. genes. Now, when so, that started with Jacob from 1814. Yeah. Could so, Jacob be his own could Jacob be his own great 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 grandfather? See, that it that's an interesting idea. <laughs> and uh, you know, like I said, going full outlander on us here. But um I, <laughs> but uh, you would think he would be in the books then if he was the ancestor. Maybe He'd be in the history oh, yeah. books, he's not. 
he he's sort of like Alex. He's sort of like um, what should we call it? You know how Eliza they like wrote her stuff from the if she let them know. <laughs> I'm thinking the burn lyrics from Alexander Hamilton. Oh yeah. Um. Well, so then we have Alice visiting Cat in the hospital after yeah. she's been because of this party thing and her uh, head mm -hmm. and then brady comes and they basically get back together she finds out she's pregnant um they're at the hospital and that's when they decide to name the baby alice and that's when he proposes to her again yes. she says yes mm -hmm. and, so, yeah. and that's when alice comes back and says did you marry mom because of you yeah which is like true but but that doesn't mean that that was like the only reason. Yeah, they still love. He still loved your mm -hmm. mom. Mm -hmm. and, and so and Elliot, he proposed to her when they were like eighteen years old, eighteen, so, nineteen years old. Yeah. So Elliot, mm -hmm. uh, he leaves with the flowers, and uh, and then Alice comes back and realizes. So she's mad because Elliot tried to convince Cat to go away to europe to go to london and she says oh you tried to erase me yeah because you didn't want her with brady and you didn't want not me. realizing that she was pregnant already mm -hmm. i had a feeling that she was that cat was already pregnant because we mm -hmm. were like based on alice's birthday cat would have been early pregnancy i mean basically I she's saying that like teen elliot knew mm -hmm. who alice was yeah. and so he did everything yeah. he could to try to dissuade to try, yeah. cat from being with mm -hmm. brady which would then erase mm -hmm. alice the whole um what's it called back to the future thing <laughs> yeah 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 uh so yeah so alice asked brady did they give up everything for her and he says we had sacrifices but it was all worth it yeah. Your your mom didn't have to choose me, but she did. Yep. Yeah. So in 1814, uh, Jacob has like this great family. So Kat's really struggling because he wants she wants him to come home. But it's hard because uh because she sees what he has there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So um, then we have Rebecca Landry. So she found in 1814, she lost a son. 1790. She, what's 1790 that? was when Jacob. Oh, right, 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 right. Right. In the past. Yeah. But um, so Rebecca Landry. So she had lost a son. And then she sees this crying boy in, near the pond. And that ends up being Jacob. Yeah. And she so. takes this like a gift from the pond or whatever that of the son that they lost and that Jacob was the one who um, is the reason why they stayed in the land kind of thing. So. Yeah, I mean, it's too bad that uh, that they couldn't have found somebody maybe who didn't have any parents or something like that, like the pond <laughs> had to take poor little Jacob. <laughs> but, now, but, here's, but now I want to know who is the old lady in in season two, episode one, you remember the old lady at at the pond with mm -hmm. um with the little boy. I yeah. thought all that time, all this time, that was La Rebecca Landry, like oh. holding her, holding him back from going, like maybe it's Jacob going, but you know, trying to jump back in the pond to go back to his time or whatever. Yeah, and Rebecca think... Landry saying that no, it's not your time yet or whatever, you know. I don't think we know who that is yet, but, um, but then, uh, so we find out Susanna, she wants to be oh. a writer, uh, yep. and sh she tells him that, she, you know, she wants to go in Jacob's place. Yep. He Jacob also writes a letter to his mom in the almanac as well. That, that letter was, okay, so the toward pages of the almanac is Elijah's story of how they found Jacob. Jacob tore it from the almanac and it was like, this is not your story to tell. This is my story. Mm -hmm. Well, I wish that Jacob had been written his story. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> oh, the Albert ass. Okay, but then he like wrote some. What, what is it? Something about the traveler looks up in the stars, the five zone or something. Yeah. On the um, on the edges of the album, and I'm seeing it as, as like a message to his mom, and I'm sitting there going like, "Why not say hi, mom? It's Jacob. I'm here. I'm safe. Whatever." It's like how it seems so. It seems so obscure. Like how would she know? But that's from Jacob. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, she wouldn't know, but I, uh, I mean, wh- why would we, why would you think? Of course, this this message is from my son who time traveled. Like you wouldn't know, but exactly. But nevertheless, like I get the instinct to want to like reach out, you know, in some way. But anyway, Susanna tries to use the pond and fails. Yes. Yeah. So With, that's like um, a big cat. moment. Yes. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or Hallmarky in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. I'm surprised. I'm mm-hmm. not surprised because I said this earlier in the season. I said that I feel like um, there's a line that Jake um, Elliot said earlier in the season where um, when Alice was asking him for advice about how to like take care of her mother kind of thing. And he said, he, his answer to Elliot, to um, Alice was something along the lines of like, um, you know, as caregivers, we are supposed to we do this, we do this. And it made me think that that is what's going on. It's like the the Landry line becomes the time travelers and the Augustine line are the caregivers of the, you know, of the Landry. You get what I'm saying? It's like true. Susanna, Susanna right. also took care of Kat, you know, Alia took care of Alice, etc. cetera, kind of thing. And so, um, I'm not surprised that she didn't time travel. I was, I would have been more surprised if she did, just because I don't think that is the destiny of the Augustine family. Mm, you get yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah. So Kat uh, and Alice like hug it out. They have a moment. Uh, yeah. And when she gets. Yeah, and she says, "You were my happy ending." So that was sweet. Yeah. Um. And uh, so then. Um, Evelyn agreed to keep their names out of the paper because evidently this party was like such a scandal that uh, mm-hmm. and and then just say you still don't owe her um, and he but she they didn't uh, press charges particularly for Colton and uh, and so that's why things got like messy and you're right I agree it, it, it probably should have been more like I don't know more than just like a big party yeah. yeah, like I, I was expecting, like I don't know, I know how much I'm gonna do it, but like murder or <laughs> or you know, some kind of like glass breaking, like police was called, yes, but it was because I was, I mean, you can't fell in the pool, not because like somebody got. Oh, hurt. but we forgot like, that really Elliot punches. Died. We forgot that yeah. Elliot punches cat. Wait. Oh, punch his cat? Yeah, yeah. And she Oh by accident. Yeah, yeah. Um yeah, so yeah she punches cat into the into the pond. Oh, or into the fountain. Cool. That's why she ends up in the hospital. Yep. Yeah. So many so many things happened this episode. Yeah. Like- yeah, that was at the end of last episode. I forgot to mention that. Um, but uh but so Elliot says that Colton was the dad I always wanted. Yeah. And uh, and then he tells Nick, I'm not going to take our friendship for granted. And Nick says, you'll always be my brother. And he's um, going to go back to Claire. 
Yeah. And so then Nick tells Alice, I know. And they have this conversation. This is the weirdest conversation I've had I've ever had in my life. <laughs> I love that conversation, too. Yeah. And then Finally, she, those two need a closure. Yeah, and then she says, the night at the cove, I've measured everyone's kiss off of that. That is just the creepiest thing to me. Oh, I thought it was kind of cute. <laughs> <laughs> I do have to say that I... I loved Her first it. Love. When, um, I loved it. It was I found it hilarious when Nick overheard Alice leaving um Noah a voicemail message a couple of episodes ago. Oh and like, yeah. He was like and he was like she was like, You heard all that, dude. She, <laughs> she ended up sitting on the boat with him, like we were talking about like um and him giving her like and dating advice and stuff that's like why that. he says it's the, like, the weirdest conversation <laughs> i've ever had in my life yeah and oh um goodness. so brady says i was going to ask alice to come to minneapolis with with me yes. which is interesting yes. and yes. uh and and then he tells her my life was right there in that hospital room yep yes. yeah and uh and then so alice sees teen elliot's and cat say goodbye to each other mm -hmm. it's too hard here and you're too difficult and then and she also saw the the reason why del left yeah so then this is the big moment so del says it it should have been jacob yeah it should have been jacob so basically like cat should have been the one that was taken not it went missing yeah yeah which is brutal and i don't think that they have built up 1999 to 2007 Dell to the point where she would say something like that. Like, no, I, that would, that's a very extreme thing for a mother to say. Not just that, but like, this is like the second episode where there, there's that phone call. And it makes me wonder who's calling because mm -hmm. could it be a time traveler calling Dell? what could it be like you know cat or even jacob or then or, or anybody in the past or the future know. or whatever calling Dell at that time and saying hey i know where jacob is because remember jacob is like i i I'm, i want to send my mom a message that i'm here or whatever maybe the way this is like Jacob's sending mm -hmm. a message to somebody. I, 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 I feel like it's someone significant on the other line, not just some random stranger, not just some psychic going, hey, I know where Jacob is. Like, you know, it's yeah. not like, I, I, I know what you did last summer, phone call kind of thing. <laughs> you know, um, you know it, 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 it just seems very, um, or a screen thing. You know, it just seems like it's, I don't know. Something I haven't thought about is, the call. Yeah, it just for it to be a second time mentioned, mm -hmm. it just it it seems important. Like yeah. there's some there's you get what I'm saying, there's a significance to the phone calls. They say land comes and goes, family is forever. And then adult cat, she tells Elliot, I was gonna run away with you. Yeah. And so then he gives her the notebook about the pond and and then we find out that thomas was executed by british soldiers that's the cliffhanger at the end yeah that's the um they think that the chains from the lighthouse ghost might have been the coins that um thomas was trying to which leads mm -hmm. to believe that thomas is there but yeah. here's the thing oh uh, there's so many I mean, Tom, Tom, Jacob was thought to be Thomas in the record books. So maybe they, maybe Jacob did again, or, you know, um, maybe Thomas did jump in the pond and like to and escape the execution. And so, like, yeah, they, we'll see. whoever we'll see did, the finale. Cyrus, Cyrus put it in there just to say that just so that there'd be no question that he died or whatever. 
or maybe um because Koyo is on the guitar. Oh, Coil is on Alice's guitar. Okay, so there has to be a Coil still in the present day, right? And Thomas at eighteen in eighteen fourteen don't have kids. His two brothers died already, right? So he's the only Coil left that we know of. So somehow or another, Coil is continuing because the name Coil is on the guitar. Mm, yeah, I forgot about that. There's so many little details that you forget about. Uh, the different That's the fun of this show is the different people see different things and you kind of talk about it. And and uh, and so, yeah, I mean, that's basically that's the cliffhanger. And we've got the finale coming up. People want to follow you, uh, on, oh. you know, on your socials and all that follow stuff. My, follow that. my heartbeats is my Instagram. It's all one word. Um, how my heartbeats. Uh, I'm also on X, Hallmark Heartbeat One. Yeah, I just call um, it, still call it Twitter. I, 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 know. I really, I just do. <laughs> so, uh, but, uh, but yeah. and, and we have, I also have a Facebook page, um, Hallmark Heartbeats podcast. And if you guys want to um, join our Facebook group, it's called Hallmark, Hallmark Fans for Diversity. Anyway, but yeah, right. so. Well, thanks for helping me with this. I really appreciate it. And you can find thank you for letting me join you again. <laughs> yes, and you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. And make sure that you're following the podcast, at Hallmarkies Pod, Hallmarkies Podcast, all of our social media, and I'll put in our playlist in the description where you can check out all our the Way Home content. And we love hearing your thoughts. And also, uh, if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. That really helps us a lot. And if you are watching on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We also have our patron group and merch store. Just take a look at that. And uh, thanks so much. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye. Bye.